Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad, for your kind introduction. Uh, yes, as Dr. Muhammad mentioned, we had uh, enough IBD now. So let's, let's go to the real medicine, to real science. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, hepatitis B. As you know now, HCV is vanishing. Uh, we have a very efficient treatment. Uh, and they claim that we as hepatologists, we will be uh, unemployed soon because we have nothing to do. But uh, I'm going to show you now in uh, coming 20 minutes that still a uh, lot of the challenges we are facing and we can do a uh, lot of things to help our patients. So just before I start, I want to uh, highlight this slide. Uh, this is Cairo, Egypt, Heliopolis, Masr Gedida, where I was born and raised. And here is uh, Salmeya, Kuwait, where I had the best years in my life. So uh, these combinations uh, made me who I am now. This is my disclosures. So it is the content of my, uh, my presentation. It uh, starts with prevalence of HPV worldwide and uh, definition of cure and the indication of antiviral treatment and what we're having currently and what we're going to have in near future and what we may have in the far future. So for uh, 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 epidemiology, as you see, our area in the Middle East is considered a uh, moderately uh, endemic area with estimated prevalence of uh, 2 to 4 percent of the population, which is still uh, a, a big number. And it's just a, a, a touching a base on history of hepatitis B. The story started in 1963 when uh, uh, Australia engine was discovered. And then in 1967, it was linked to hepatitis B. And 1971, uh, the HBV, HBV test uh, to screen uh, uh, blood started. And late in 1971, the first uh, heat-treated uh, virus uh, vaccine uh, was developed. And in 18, 1981, the first commercial HPV vaccine was introduced. And in 1968, the first recombinant vaccine uh, uh, licensed. And uh, back in 1970, discovered the Dan particle. And in 1974, uh, HPV DNA was identified. And by year 1976, alpha interferon uh, uh, was discovered to suppress um, HPV. And 1987, research uh, uh, into uh, reverse uh, transcriptase uh, inhibitors and 1994 uh, terfirin alpha licensed and uh, 2002 uh, the big rated one uh, was uh, uh, approved and since 1980 till currently uh, we are trying to uh, elucidate the HPV uh, uh, replication cycle. There is a history of treatment in 1998 tamifidine was the first drug to be approved and uh, at that time, it was uh, uh, a very big uh, breakthrough, but unfortunately, lately, we discovered uh, uh, it has very uh, uh, low genetic barrier and chance of uh, resistance was very high. Uh, and 2002, and Adivovir was uh, uh, discovered, and then 2005, Antigavir, then uh, Tilbividin, followed by uh, uh, TDF, Tenovir Dexaprosir Femorate, and lately, in 2017, the tenivovir alfenamide was licensed to treat uh, chronic uh, hepatitis B. This is a very interesting uh, uh, slide uh, done by Professor um, uh, uh, Andaluk from uh, US for definition of cure. What we're having now is called only a partial cure, which we only can affect the uh, HPV uh, DNA level with very uh, uh, modest uh, effect or no effect on hepatitis B surface engine titer, and at the same time, no effect on hepatitis B core antibody uh, titer. What we are aiming in near future, what is called the functional cure, which now we're having in, in the pipelines. So we are aiming again to suppress the uh, DNA uh, replication, but at the same time, uh, to significant decrease of HBS engine titer or even its disappearance, but still with modest uh, uh, effect on anti core uh, antibody titer. And the dream is to reach what's called complete cure, which we can get rid of everything, including uh, uh, anti-core uh, antibody. In 2017, uh, the easel came with a new definition of uh, uh, stages of hepatitis B. So for HB uh, engine positive, what we used to know as immune tolerant, which now is known as uh, chronic uh, uh, HBV -E engine positive chronic infection. And uh, for those who uh, uh, used to be known as immune reactive HBE engine positive, now is known as chronic uh, HBVE engine uh, uh, positive chronic hepatitis. 
And for those with HB engine negative, uh, the inactive catalyst state is now known as a chronic HB uh, E engine negative uh, 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 chronic uh, uh, infection, and the HB en uh, engine chronic hepatitis is still uh, the same. And as you can see, treatment is indicated only in uh, chronic infection and not indicated in uh, uh, sorry in chronic hepatitis and not indicated in chronic uh, infection. So, uh, as you all know, just a reminder of indication of, of treatment. Uh, for HB engine positive or negative chronic hepatitis, those patients with HBV DNA more than 2,000 international units per ml and ALT more than upper limit of normal and or at least moderate liver uh, necroinflammation, I mean uh, F2 or more, uh, uh, should be treated. And cirrhotic uh, uh, with compensated or decompensated cirrhosis uh, uh, need treatment with any uh, detectable uh, uh, viral load. And obviously, active hepatitis B with DNA level more than 20,000 international units and ALT more than two times ablative normal should be uh, uh, treated. So, uh, what about who can, who might be or can be treated? So, those with HB uh, E engine positive chronic uh, infection who are more than 30 years of age, just again to clarify, those patients who are E engine positive with very high viral load reaching millions and uh, normal ALT. Uh, uh, those can uh, uh, be treatment regardless of uh, severity of liver uh, 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 lesion or uh, histopathology. And those with family history uh, of HB engine positive or E engine negative, chronic HBV infection, and family history of HCC or cirrhosis and extra hepatic manifestations can also be treated uh, uh, even if typical treatment indications are not fulfilled. So, there is some also recommendation from my easel 2017, which is the latest guidelines for HBV that uh, uh, tenofovir alfenamide, TDF, or uh, anticavir as monotherapy uh, are uh, preferred first line of treatment. Patient on uh, uh, TDF at risk of development uh, uh, and or with underlying renal or bone disease should be considered to switch uh, to uh, uh, alfenamide or anticavir. And TAV is still preferred to anticavir in patients with previous nucleoside exposure, those with LAM exposure, I mean. And TAV is a rescue therapy uh, option in patients with uh, LAM uh, resistance, or Tagbifidine, Adivovir, or even uh, Anticavir uh, uh, resistance. So we hope also have some indications of selecting uh, uh, tenofovir alfenamide uh, or Anticavir uh, over TDF. Those who are uh, uh, aged more than 60, those who already with bone disease, chronic steroid uh, use, or use other medications that worsen bone density, and the history of uh, fragility fractures or osteoporosis, or those with renal alternation, or those who are uh, known to have uh, 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 or prone to tubulopathy. So this uh, slide is very well known among hepatologists. Of, uh, the difference between TDF and TAV, the issue of TDF that most of the medication uh, used to go to plasma, not the hepatocytes. So uh, uh, it has a lot of side effects, as I mentioned, tubulopathy and renal impairment and uh, bone disease. But with TAV, 90% goes uh, directly to the hepatocyte. So the uh, the dose is much lower, it's 25 milligram in TAV, while it's 300 milligram in TDF. So what is the efficacy of TAV versus TDF? After 96 weeks, it's almost the same, uh, regardless of E-engine positive uh, uh, or negative, and no resistance was detected uh, through 96 weeks. And similar uh, DNA separation uh, rates for TAV compared to TDF uh, uh, through the week uh, 96. And same also apply to ALT uh, normalization. And the question now here is, is it important to achieve ALT normalization or no? Yes, it is, because it's well known that uh, ALT normalization is shared with much better outcome and less chance to develop uh, cirrhosis and, uh, and, and HCC. So uh, also uh, ASLD in 2018, they have also some points about uh, TAV. It's a one preferred first line therapy for adults with immune active chronic hepatitis B. And TAF should be considered in patients who is, uh, or at risk of renal dysfunction or bone disease. Uh, it's one option to switch uh, to in patients with uh, suspected TDF-associated renal dysfunction and or bone disease. And it may be used in patients with hepatic decompensation uh, who have renal dysfunction and or uh, bone disease. And also is the preferred uh, uh, analog for uh, uh, chronic hepatitis B patients with no liver solid organ transplant or undergoing liver transplantation. So, uh, uh, how to monitor patients on treatment, either anticavir, TDF, or TAV. We should do ALT and serum uh, uh, DNA uh, for all patients under treatment. And also, we have to do renal monitoring. And we can switch, as I mentioned, from uh, uh, anticavir, uh, 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 switch to uh, anticavir or TAV. 
those who are uh, at risk, like old age and bone disease or uh, renal disease. And also we have to do uh, long-term surveillance, uh, which is a must for those who are cirrhotic, and it can be done for those who are only under treatment. So when can continue treatment? This question is, uh, the answer is very difficult, but uh, also easily try to make our life easier. Uh, so uh, we have three levels out that we can take our decision. So it should be discontinued after confirmation of HP uh, S engine loss, plus or minus reconversion. Uh, I mean to develop HPV antibody, S antibody. And it can be discontinued only uh, uh, in those who are E engine positive without cirrhosis who achieve a stable uh, E engine C reconversion uh, and undetectable DNA and complete 12 months of concession therapy. And they should be also under closed post uh, mon uh, uh, treatment cessation monitoring. And it may be uh, discontinued in selected E engine uh, negative patients who are al also non cirrhotic who achieve long term, I mean three years or more, of virological separation uh, if closed post uh, 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 treatment monitoring can be uh, uh, granted. So, management for patients with, uh, with uh, uh, nuke failure. As you can see, we have a lot of variants and uh, mutations, and still TAV and, and TDF has the best uh, uh, profile. And also, it's the management of patients with uh, uh, nuke failure. If they are lamb resistance, we can switch to uh, TDF or TAV. Telbevudine or antiquifer resistance, we can switch also to TDF uh, uh, or TAV. So in antiquifer resistance, if they are uh, lamb naive, you can switch to antiquifer or TAV or uh, uh, TDF. If they are lamb resistant, switch to TDF or TAV. And if uh, HBV DNA plateau, we can add anticaver or switch to uh, uh, anticaver. So if TDF or TAV resistance, if lamb naive, switch to anticaver. If lamb resistant, add uh, uh, anticaver. And those with multi-drug resistance, we can uh, switch or add on both uh, anticaver and uh, tenevovir. So efficacy and limitation of the current treatment uh, available. So it's result in potent viral separation and reverse hepatic uh, fibrosis and also can prevent progression to liver failure. And for limitations, it's at a low rate of uh, HBS engine loss and decrease, but do not eliminate uh, risk of HCC, and requires long-term uh, duration, lifelong in some patients, uh, to maintain uh, benefit resulting in high cost, potential drug resistance, and prolonged adverse events. So for the future, which is uh, uh, the main bulk of my, uh, my talk today, we have uh, new biomarkers like the CCDNA, but it's limited by because it needs liver biopsy. We have what's called hepatitis B uh, core-related uh, antigen. It's composed of biomarker. Utility is still under evaluation. And we have what's called HBV RNA, which has, which has a strong correlation with interhepatic CCDNA, uh, possible utility in predicting viral rebound after discontinuation of, uh, of treatment. And for uh, uh, novel treatment, we'll come to it in, in details now. So just a few words about the correlated uh, antigen. It's recently emerged as a potential relevant marker for hepatitis B infection. It has both a correlation with HBV DNA irrespective of HB e engine status. It is associated with CCDNA, and the core related engine may be detected, detectable when HBV DNA and S engine are not, and potentially useful to assess HBV load and for uh, monitoring. So it is the most important slide, just if uh, uh, you want to understand the new uh, medications, how it will work. Just we have to uh, simply know the life cycle of hepatitis B. So first, uh, the entry of uh, the virus into the hepatocyte, and then it goes to the uh, nucleus, where the CCDNA uh, uh, can be formed, and then integration happens, which is the worst part, and then uh, transcription based on the integration and the new uh, uh, DNA, and then through endoplasmic reticulum, it's translated, and then encapsidation and reverse transcription happens, and then both the senses, and then again the virus is released to infect the neighboring uh, cell. So we can have uh, so many targets to, uh, 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 to aim to, uh, treating to, uh, 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 trying to uh, treat and to reach uh, what we call the functional cure. So for the virology, we can have uh, medications which can inhibit entry, it's called the entry inhibitors, and also we can have the CCDNA degeneration, a slicing elimination, uh, or RNA uh, interference. We can have release inhibitors, we can have gene editing, and CRISPR to remove all integrated viruses, and immunology, like TLR and uh, uh, RIG1 uh, uh, agonist. So we'll start with uh, uh, CRISPR, the Cas9, uh, CRISPR stands for a cluster regularly interspaced short palindromic uh, repeats. 
and the Cas9 is an enzyme works at the platform to efficient gene knockout. It can inhibit HPV replication up to eight folds. Inhibition due to induction of mutations and deletion of cCDNA from recruited uh, Cas9 repaired by non-homologous uh, enjoinings. Inhibition uh, not affected uh, when uh, tafurin alpha used in combination and independently uh, uh, confirmed. Here's how it works. As you can see, uh, the CRISPR looks like uh, a carrier for the RAS9, which can uh, go to the HPV DNA and can cut it and induce mutation and uh, so uh, uh, replication will result in unhealthy DNA without hepatitis uh, B. So for the entry inhibitors, we have what's called the Merldex, uh, which is, uh, can be used in combination with big interferon alpha 2A. So this slide uh, studying the efficacy and safety for patients with hepatitis B and D co-infection uh, uh, in phase two trial. It's called the uh, bolivertide. Uh, it's first, uh, first in class uh, entry inhibitor for HPV and uh, HDV. It's, an, as I mentioned, at phase two study, a monotherapy. It led to HPV uh, RNA decline and improvement in ALT levels. And end of treatment data from uh, 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 the study drug plus big interferon alpha 48 weeks uh, combination uh, study have been reported. And here's a 24 weeks treatment free follow up uh, uh, data uh, presented. Here, as you can see, the four arms of uh, the study. One is only interferon, one two milligram of uh, bolivertide plus interferon, one five milligram plus interferon, and one two milligram uh, 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 monotherapy. And for conclusion, in contrast to big interferon alpha monotherapy, uh, the bolivertide plus uh, uh, big interferon alpha 2A demonstrate high rates of HDV RNA suppression and HBS engine loss was achieved in 27% of patients, indicating potential role for uh, this medication in the future. And now it's, it's uh, a license in, uh, in, in Europe in treatment of hepatitis D. So also for uh, what we call the, the core inhibitor, it's in terms of safety and efficacy result of phase two uh, 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 program of uh, ABI, ABI H0731 plus new therapy and treatment of uh, uh, naive and treatment suppressed patient and hepatitis B. So as you all know, NUC is a standard care of uh, therapy and hepatitis B, but achieve low rates of sustained response of therapy. The novel core inhibitor 731 exhibited a potent anti-HPV activity over 28 days as monotherapy, and uh, 731 plus NUC uh, combo is being evaluated in two double-blind placebo-controlled phase 2A uh, trials, patient hepatitis B and F2, F0 uh, cirrhosis. And also for conclusion, I'm not going to take you through this, uh, the whole results, the interim data suggests that uh, the uh, 731 uh, plus nuke was well tolerated uh, over the dosing period and exhibited early and enhanced antiviral benefit in suppressing HPV uh, DNA and HPV RNA levels to a greater extent uh, to seen with nuke therapy. And this interim data support use of this medication uh, in the future. So we also have an, um, uh, monoclonal antibodies, which is called uh, Linvirvimab. It's um, the hypothesis. Based on the hepatitis B S engine, uh, it's the main issue against the immune response to hepatitis B. So this uh, monoclonal antibody is mainly targeted against uh, 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 HBS engine. Uh, so its therapeutic potential of surrogate uh, linvirvimab was evaluated in uh, humanized based hepatitis B uh, the mouse model, and result showed sustained HBS engine loss for six months uh, was uh, close uh, uh, observation after end of. Uh, a treatment in uh, almost half of uh, the trials, the, the, the mice, and replication uh, of HP uh, uh, core engine hepatocyte. Two minutes. Two minutes. Barely detectable, and um, we had more than one log uh, reduction in, uh, in copy of injectable DNA, and also more than one, one log reduction in HBS uh, engine uh, uh, titer. And here is in, in diagram uh, just showing uh, simply how the HBS engine uh, affects immune response against uh, hepatitis B. And this is a short-term RNA uh, interference uh, uh, therapy, also used in hepatitis uh, B. So also I'll take you in uh, uh, just a minute. Okay, so it's, it's, an, it's like a uh, uh, therapeutic vaccine, which only uh, been given uh, uh, three times, only three injections, and resulted in very uh, good uh, uh, reduction, as you can see down here, 
uh, either those patients who are nuke naive or already on, uh, on nuke, they have very good result with uh, suppression of HPV DNA and at the same time uh, disappearance of hepatitis B uh, surface antigen. So as I mentioned, a complete cure was a dream till six weeks back uh, in December 22nd when this article appeared in Hepatology Journal was the disappearance of the first molecule which can work on CC DNA and it can inhibit uh, uh, H replication and can lead in the future in, uh, I will not say now, uh, uh, cure, but at least we can dream of achieving uh, a cure uh, soon. Just uh, uh, one last slide. WHO has a very uh, ambitious goal of hepatitis elimination from the world by 2030, and we are still far behind uh, uh, this goal, at least for uh, HPV. So these are some interactions that we can do to, uh, to achieve, uh, interventions we can do to achieve this goal by 2030. So it's including the blood uh, safety and early treatment and good uh, uh, screening. So for conclusion, take home message, hepatitis B is the most common chronic viral infection worldwide. Uh, most of patients are still not diagnosed and we need more screening. Uh, current treatment offer only a partial cure. Many ongoing clinical trials using different potential targets uh, which offer hope to obtain functional cure in the near future. More efforts is required to reach uh, WHA goal by 2030 to uh, hepatitis elimination. And uh, the question, can we reach complete cure and distribution soon or no?